Hey, so new version of Dronin is coming out soon. We're currently on Samsara, and the new Kyote is coming out really soon. I'm going to upgrade to the uh, preview release, and I thought I'd do a quick demo on how the update procedure works, because this is so simple, it makes it super easy, but people keep wanting to make it hard. Um, anyway, I use the... Uh, portable version of drone in GCS, which means I don't install it. I just unzip the zip and then uh, this is where I where it is and I always run this create shortcut which gives me a nice shortcut to the GCS right there. Now the first time you start a new version of GCS you'll probably get this warning from Windows. You can ignore this. You just click that and say run anyway. That's because Windows is a little freaked out that it's not a signed app. Uh, Microsoft wants money to sign apps. Dronin's free software. Don't be expecting that to change anytime soon. Uh, sometimes, if you haven't run the GCS before or this particular version, it will pop up and ask you which configuration you want before it comes up this way. I've already selected the developer version, uh, and that's what I prefer. Basic is just fine for most users. Um, anyway, Dronin is up and running, and my hex here with uh, an original brain FPV board, not the new RE1, the original brain, is ready to be upgraded. So we will take my USB cord and plug it in. There's our connection, and hey, GCS has recognized that it has a version of firmware that does not match this current version of GCS. You can hit details to see the versions that mismatch. And what this is that mismatches is the UAVOs, which are the uh, programming objects that hold all the information about your configuration and all the information that the uh, firmware uses while controlling your hex. I'll probably do another video about them later because that's something you really will want to learn at some point, but it can get confusing fast. For now, just consider it as the uh, version of what's in the memory on here and it's not matching the GCS, so the GCS can't configure everything. So we need to upgrade to a firmware that has a matching version. So we'll say yes. And auto upgrade will run just that smooth. It's going to download our settings. Once our settings are downloaded, it's going to upload them to the cloud and then get back a modified version. Uh, this modified version has been updated to work with the new version of GCS and the new UAVOs. So you can continue without saving, but it's a good idea to save. I'm going to go without because I already saved mine while testing this. And now it's going to erase our board. And this is going to erase both settings and firmware. Now it's going to upload our new firmware. And you can follow along here. It shows you what it's doing as it goes. Uh, some of these are only necessary when a new bootloader is released. Some of them are only necessary when upgrading certain boards from certain uh, firmwares. So just what runs changes from time to time. But what you're seeing here is usually what you'll see upgrading from the previous version to the next version of Dronin. It finished flashing. It's rebooting the board. And now it's going to re-upload our savings, or our settings. So no settings are currently saved. Select Review and Save to import the previous settings. Review and Save. Note the big warning, or the big red note here. Warnings are normal when the format of the configuration changes between versions. Please review any areas with warnings after saving. And if we look through here, we'll see sensor settings and stabilization settings have both changed. Um, basically, that just means that that's what's different, and that's why GCS wouldn't know how to deal with the old old firmware. Um, so those would be good to check when you uh, finish importing. Select all, and we're going to save. It saves our settings, and it's complete. It does suggest doing a uh, reset of the flight board by removing and attaching power and USB. So we'll close this. We'll disconnect our USB. We're disconnected. We will reconnect our USB, and now that we're connected again, you can see 
We're responding in our PFD. All our settings up here look good. Uh, input is yellow because I don't have power attached right now, so I don't actually have um, my RX powered up, and that's why we're getting an RC input warning. But that's really all there is to it, to updating. Uh, you don't have to do anything fancier. You don't have to go in and update everything manually. It all just works. Um, now you're free to go in from here and, whoa, that got way smaller than I expected. Let me make that a little bit bigger for us. And you can come into your settings and you can change things. If we go to flight data, we can see our flight data, of course. If we go to configuration, we could come in here and we could go ahead and we could change and adjust things if we wanted to at this point. Um, of course, I'm going to make sure that I have auto-tune enabled. I do. And I'm going to make sure that I have a uh, flight mode set to auto-tune. I do. Because I haven't flown this guy in a while, so I'm going to do a fresh auto-tune on it. Which also means I'm going to go to stabilization. And I'm going to go back to defaults. And I'm making sure everything is back to default. I'm gonna, even going to make sure that my rates are back to default. And there we go. We can hit save. And now we are uh, ready to go do a flight with a uh, auto-tune, which will be another video, how to do auto-tune. I'll have to get props on, and I'll have to wait till daylight. It's after dark, so that'll be a few days. But hopefully that shows just how easy it is to upgrade, and uh, if anybody has any questions, post them down below. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, let me know why. It's just a friendly thing to do. And uh, go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more. I'll keep doing videos about droning and how to set it up, how to configure it, and what's new and different and what's changing if uh, people like them. Thanks a lot.